Hello and welcome to the Easy Solution Systems tutorial videos. I'm Jesse Brown and today we will be going through setting up the point of sales in Retailman. First we're going to go into maintenance and then setup. Then we're going to click on the POS tab. On the left here we've got the POS screen setup. What we want to do is enable quick buttons this way we can access items that are not barcoded and we can access them quickly without having to scan them. So for these settings we have 6 rows maximum and 10 columns maximum. In total we can have 500 buttons on the quick button screen. In the next section we have the random weight barcodes. This is used if you have an item that um, calculates weight. So this includes the price and the weight. So the barcode also has to match what you have um, with these initials that are set up. So you will need to match your scale with this. On the right side here, we can set up the company name and the company address, which will appear on the receipt. So there are also a few options that you can print or hide on the receipt. So you can choose which ones you would like. And also you've got the docket footer, which you can set up yourself. Uh, this is how um, the company has set it up for this example. If you put staff in here in capitalized letters between these tags, it will automatically input the staff member into the receipt. And this goes for points as well. Number of copies, default one. You also need to put in the currency symbol and the number of lines, and you can choose that as you will. You also need to do that for each type of sale, so credit sale, gift voucher, and lay-by. But the two ones that are used uh, mostly are cash sale and credit sale. Next option, we have to go to hardware setup. So when we want to print from the point of sale, we need a point of sale printer. You can print this out on a standard printer, um, but it'll come out as the standard invoice format, which might be a bit expensive. As you can see in here, there's a list of printers that you can use. Most printers can be compatible with uh, Epson, which is the most used printer. For the Windows driver, you can either do the generic text only, which is the one that I'm doing, or you can download the Epson driver from the internet. Here for the double width on, off and the auto cutter, um, this will control how the printer behaves. So you can change this as you would like. Um, on the other side, you have um, POS printer 2, uh, these are for special occasions, so you don't need to do anything here. The virtual printer is used for um, special circumstances, um, for a certain application that uses uh, security cameras. So um, you don't need to change anything here, you can just leave this blank. If you do put something in here, you'll um, get extra printing um, on your dockets and that's probably not what you want. If you do accidentally happen to choose an option, um, you can just click in the box and then press the delete key and it will remove the option. So we want to choose the cash draw tab and you'll have to set that up as well. And you can also go into the poll display and set up the um, display here in this tab. Again with the scale tab um, you can set up your scale options. Same thing for scanner and credit cards. So once you've done we're going to go save. Um, here we're going to go into user files. In this section we can allow certain users to go into certain options for point of sales. So if you would like certain users to not be able to modify certain things on the point of sales screen, we're going to click the name and we're going to choose settings. We're going to go to the POS tab. Um, here if we do disable this will block that user from being able to go into that field. If you choose skip, um, it will skip that, but the uh, user can go back in and modify that field. And with enable, every time you scan that field, it will move to the next field down. You can allow certain users to go into certain places and other users um, you can prohibit. You can even hide some of the fields as well, or you can allow or disallow cash payments. Once you're done with that, you just click on save. Next, we're going to the point of sales button in the top left. We're going to choose point of sales. 
Here you can see the 6x10 menu. So the top buttons are the menu buttons and the ones underneath are the item buttons. For the menus we can shift and press right click on the mouse and here you have the menu button setup screen. So you can change the looks and the behavior of that button. If you want to change the item buttons, you'll need to hold down control and right click. So shift is for the menu buttons and control is for the item buttons. We can change the part button here. We can also change the button color, item name, um, picture file even, um, the size of the font. And once you're done with that, you can choose to save. So if we want to change a menu color, we left click on the menu button and then we hold shift and right click and choose button color. If you click on the text itself in the button color button, you can change the text color. And if you choose the area outside of where it says text color, you will change the background of the button. If you would like to change the color of all the items that belong to a certain menu, you hold shift control and press right click on that menu which will change the color of all the items in the menu so shift control right click saving you a lot of time you can expand or collapse columns and rows you can move the screen around you can change size if you would like to so next when we start to sell for a quick sale, notice that the focus goes into the first item and the grid. If you would like to sell that to a certain client, you can um, click in the box down here and type in the code, name, phone number, or mobile number. You can either click on the item buttons in the grid, or you can enter it manually or scan. So if you click on Delhi banana bread, you'll see that the item appears in the box. Notice that you can hold that sale or recall. What this button does is if you have a client um, who is in line or in queue and would like to go get something else and he's already put some of his items through, you can press this button and it will put his sale on hold. Um, and he can go and get what he needs and then come back and continue his sale. By default, it will enter the date and the time and we choose save. This way you can process the next person in line's order. When the client comes back, you can press the recall button again and find their entry in there. Next, if you would like to add multiple quantities to the order, the easiest way to do this is to type the number into POS using the buttons and then selecting the product. If we type in 10 and then choose Delhi banana bread slice, notice that now there are 10 in quantity. If you would like to add more or take away, you click in part number and choose the minus and the plus button to add or take away. This way, let's say you needed 15 orders, it saves you having to press Delhi banana bread 15 times. Here we're going to go to the payment screen. So you can choose to do it with one button or you can choose to enter it manually if you would like to. This way you can pay um, split payments. Um, so for example, partly cash and partly on card or check, you will do it the manual way. So for example, we write 12 on cash and 20 on card. And then we can choose to do save or print. Or you can go back and do more if you would like. Finally, we're going to look at the change password button. As you can see on the right there, it says change password and screen lock. I have incorporated this button into the one button, but you can have them separately if you would like to. The reason change password and screen lock are one and the same is because when you click on it, a password box will appear um, and the only way now to interact with the interface is if you are logged in. So there's no close button on the login button. You only have the OK button and are prompted to type the password in. So if you would like to walk away from the computer for a moment, you can just press that and people won't be able to go into your computer and 
change things or do whatever. Also note that in some cases you may need to change the user to a manager um, in order to process discounts as you may not have access to giving discounts to clients. So in order to set this all up, you will need to hold control and right click on a button. Here you can see in part number between the two tags, it says control plus F12. Um, this is the command in order to change user or lock screen. And so we're going to implement that to activate the feature to be able to do this. So when you do that, you can put in save. So now you can choose change user or lock screen. And here you can enter your password again to re-log in and unlock the screen. Or you can change to someone who has access to other benefits if needed. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it's been helpful. We hope to see you again soon. Bye.